To identify particular gene products, we can use specific identification technique like a quantitative real-time PCR. Identify the gene expression, confirm differentially expressed genes obtained from high throughput assays, even do a mutation screening of SNPs. Uh, we can see TACMAN assays for this and or even quantify the DNA or RNA in diagnostic samples. The basic components of a PCR over here uh, consist of a baseline, which is the number of PCR cycles during which the signal accumulates below the threshold. It is essentially used to determine what we can keep as a threshold. The cycle threshold itself, which is a CT value, is a fraction of the PCR cycles necessary to reach the sufficient signal and uh, touch the threshold. So it is significantly above the baseline. The CD values are directly proportional to the quantity of the start material and it forms the basis for the conversion to mRNA expression level. In order to detect the signal, we can use a fluorescent dye such as a TACMAN probe, which is composed of two types of fluorophores. One is called a quencher fluorophore, which is a long wavelength colored dye such as red, and it reduces the fluorescence from the reporter fluorophore, which may be a short wavelength colored dye such as green. So the transfer of uh, energy between these uh, reporter to quencher occurs through the FRET uh, phenomenon, which is the fluorescence or the Forster resonance energy transfer. It inhibits one dye uh, caused by another without emission of a proton. The basic steps involved in a TACMAN probe-based assay is first, we polymerize a a fluorescent reporter dye and a quencher to the 5' prime and 3' prime end of a TACMAN probe respectively. Second, we, when the probe is intact, the reporter dye emission is quenched and the cleavage occurs during each extension cycle of the PCR when the DNA polymerase cleaves the reporter dye from the probe. So the polymerization is completed that when, once the quencher is separated from the reporter and it emits the characteristic fluorescence, which can be detected under a photo detector. As we can imagine, the intensity of fluorescence increases after every cycle because more probes are released into the separated state. Similarly, for a signal emission, we can have a scorpion primer where the probe is physically coupled to the primer, which means that the reaction leading to the signal generation is a unimolecular one. It is in contrast to the bimolecular collision which occurs in TACMAN, for example. So over here, after one cycle of a PCR extension, the newly synthesized target region will be attached to the same strand as the probe. So the probe is carrying a hairpin-like structure which will denature and it, because it causes less energy than the new DNA duplex pr produced. Consequently, the hairpin sequence hybridizes to a part of the new PCR product. The separation of the fluorophore from the quencher causes the emission of fluorescence, which can be detected under the photodetector. 